Google has officially launched its latest flagship device, which is not only the world's first phone running Android 2.3 OS, but thanks to its contour display, it also wins bragging rights for being the first mobile phone with a curved screen. The 4-inch touchscreen has a 1 GHz Hummingbird processor, combined flash and HTML5 technology for internet browsing, and a front and rear facing camera. At Google's new offices, I met with Dominic Travers, who's the organizer of DroidCon, a London event all about Android. At first impressions, it feels very nice in the hand, but uh, and most importantly, the, it's very, very quick. The processor and the graphics processing feels substantially faster than any Android phone I've used to date. The screen is nice and bright, very responsive. Performance of uh, Google Earth and mapping on this is, uh, is really very, very good. Just two years after the first Android phone, the G1, hit the shelves, today there are over 300,000 Android devices activated daily worldwide. With so many different handsets all offering some version of the Android OS, where does the Nexus S fit into the already confusing marketplace? It's going to have a difficult fit in the marketplace, much the same as the, the Nexus One, because uh, there's only Vodafone subsidizing the handset, so uh, the other operators are going to be trying to sell uh, you know, the HTC and Samsung Galaxy S's on the subsidized uh, operator ROM built handsets, so they feel they can add value to the device. Although, really, for, you know, for people that are interested in Android, this Google Experience build is the build of Android you should be looking for because it gets updated a lot quicker. Uh, and from my experience, it performs better than the, than the OEM variants of Android. A standout feature of the co-developed phone with Samsung is that it supports near-field communications. NFC will become increasingly more popular in the next couple of years as all the top handset manufacturers, including Nokia, RIM and Apple, pledge their support for the contactless technology. It's very good that it's NFC enabled. I think Google will really help push the adoption of NFC technologies. Um, you know, so far people have been talking about NFC for five or six years as being the future of, of, of payments, replacing credit cards, etc. But nobody's really bought into this yet. But I think the kind of adoption for NFC technologies is probably going to take two or three years to come to the fore. But the fact that they have something that's capable of trialing the technologies is a very positive step. Also this week, the internet search giant unveiled the Chrome Web Store for free and paid apps for the Chrome browser and for the Chrome OS. It also showed off the first laptop computer running Chrome. It shows that Google is pushing Chrome OS for notebooks and netbooks, whilst Android will continue to run primarily on smartphones and tablets. I don't see how the Chrome OS is going to compete in the short term because a lot of the applicant software from, from Adobe and some other third-party software suppliers that runs on both Mac OS and Windows is kind of why people, you know, most people buy computers professionally to use third-party software. And they, they choose an operating system and, and they use you know, either their corporate applications or designers, etc., use a set of tools uh, to do their work. So I'm going to be interested to see how Chrome OS actually fits into people's workflow. The Nexus S is available starting on December 20th, whilst notebooks running Chrome OS will be commercially available in the middle of next year. Thanks for watching. I'm Leila Mackey in London.